Along with setting up what looks to be one of the most emotional phase conclusions yet in this year's Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Not one, but two subsequent and somewhat stacked phases were laid out before our very eyes at this year's Kelmacan. So here are just a few of the glorious details about this incoming fifth MCU chapter that fans have been able to extract from the embarrassment of riches unleashed on the Hall H faithful. Marvelous Morgan here from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 secrets of Phase 5 you need to know. Number 10. The Eternals will become cameo players For all of the projects that undoubtedly deliver the goods over the course of the latest chunk of MCU narrative, that would later become known as the first chapter of the multiversal saga. Not every adventure was a bona fide hit by any means. In particular, Chloe Zhao's Eternals epic, whilst admirably ambitious, didn't quite land with the masses in the way Feige and his crew would have likely hoped. So it came as little surprise that next to no real mention of the ancient gang was made throughout Feige's Phase 5 and 6 announcements. And talk of a potential sequel has all but been extinguished post-critical hammering, despite the likes of Gemma Chan declaring that she will reprise her role in the coming years. Yeah, but it already being suggested that Kit Harrington's Dane Whitman will likely make his presence known as Black Knight in the upcoming Blade project set to go down within Phase 5. The smart money is on the many other Eternals players rocking up in a similar side role capacity from here on out. Number 9. Spider-Man and Daredevil will be street-level leaders from the second Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock shockingly wandered onto the MCU scene during No Way Home, fans were quite rightly punching the air at the mere thought of a world where Daredevil and Spider-Man could be found whooping ass in the same cinematic city. And while it wasn't clear precisely what the future held for Cox's Man Without Fear past his Phase 4 cameo showing, news of Daredevil once again returning to the small screen for his own Disney Plus MCU series by the name of Daredevil Born Again seems to confirm that Murdock will once again become a central figure within the Marvel world. Also, Cox appears to be stepping into the Wong role of MCU cameo leader in the coming years, with the star expected to don his famous shades in both the She-Hulk and Echo shows too. All of said appearances only add more fuel to Feige's recent comments of both Daredevil and Spidey being seen as the super faces spearheading Marvel's street-level charge going forward. So perhaps a webhead slash horned hero team-up could grace the phase before Thunderbolt seals the chapter. Number 8. Riri Williams will build her first suit before Ironheart in the few moments fans could bring their eyes away from a tissue during the staggering first look at the incoming Black Panther sequel unveiled at Comic-Con, the world was given a glimpse at the debut of none other than eventual Ironheart herself, Riri Williams, being greeted by the rumoured next hero to don the famous panther suit, Shuri, and the presence of Williams within Wakanda's lab, along with the sight of her clearly piecing together her version of the iconic Iron Man suit during the trailer too, made the idea of the talented tech whiz already donning her cutting-edge armour by the time her Ironheart Disney Plus series blasts onto the scene in late 2023, feel like almost a certainty. It's also interesting to note that in the comics, William's mentor is none other than Tony Stark himself, making a direct MCU adaptation of her character from the page pretty difficult due to his infinity frazzled status currently. So perhaps Shuri will be the one to step into the role of mentor on the back of Williams being inspired by Stark's suit and sacrifice in Endgame. Or maybe not, I don't know, I'm not the boss of these things. Number 7. The Guardians will have nothing to do with Thor As Avengers Endgame reached its game-changing conclusion, everyone's favourite God of Thunder seemingly joining forces with the Guardians of the Galaxy seemed like the sort of development destined to create shockwaves throughout much of the incoming phases. However, Thor Love and Thunder quickly laughed off any hopes of seeing the Asgardians of the Galaxy set the MCU on fires for years to come, as the titular hero kissed goodbye to Star-Lord and the gang pretty early on in the runtime. And judging from James Gunn's Comic-Con comments of Love and Thunder having absolutely nothing to do with the tale he wrote for Volume 3, you do have to wonder why Marvel bothered to infuse the self-proclaimed strongest Avenger with this gang of misfits in the first place. Thor is very much said to be returning based on Marvel's Thor will return statement in Love and Thunder's end credits, much to the surprise of Chris Hemsworth and Natalie Portman, mind, but it looks like Guardians Volume 3 will not boast any thunder. Maybe just a little bit of love though, yeah? Number 6. A number of heroes and villains will be outed as scrolls. While it was somewhat satisfying to finally see the debut of the scrolls during the events of Captain Marvel, it still felt like there was a ton left on the table when it pertained to the race famed for secretly invading planet Earth in the legendary Secret Invasion comic book series. Well, it looks as though Marvel Studios' spin on that much-adored arc is set to finally deliver the shape-shifting goods and then some, with the Secret Invasion Disney Plus series being described at Comic-Con 2022 as a darker thriller. The first footage from the incoming show also suggests that Nick Fury and Agent Maria Hill 
will most definitely have their work cut out for them. With the former S.H.I.E.L.D. director tasked with dealing with a group of Skrulls who have been infiltrating Earth for years, almost 30 years on from his initial interaction with the race in 1995. Corby Smulders would also add during the event that you're never gonna know who people are. Are they a Skrull or are they human? Which hints at perhaps some of the MCU's longtime faces like the already announced James Rhodey and Everett K. Ross being revealed as undercover Skrulls all along. Number 5. Bill Murray is set for a kingly debut Of the many names you wouldn't have ever expected to see rub shoulders with the likes of Paul Rudd, Scott Lang and co, iconic comedy legend Bill Murray probably ranked pretty highly on most folks' lists. However, with the star himself casually dropping the fact he'd already joined the MCU back in October 2021, many were left wondering what his apparent bad guy presence would entail in the third Ant flick. Well, Comic-Con appeared to finally offer a little indication as to what Murray Madness could be incoming as Ant-Man and the gang find themselves being sucked into the quantum realm once again. It's during these first glimpses of the group's latest quantum trip that Murray's apparent ruler of a strange city was revealed to have previously come into contact with Janet Van Dyne, with the assumed king of the land uttering, Janet Van Dyne, I thought you were dead, during his Hall H teaser. Don't expect Murray to set up shop in the MCU for the long run, though. As the typically to-the-point actor has already confessed, I don't think I need that experience a second time. Each to their own, Murray, mate, yeah? Number 4. A Whole New Kang Though it hasn't exactly been kept a secret that Jonathan Major's eye-catching Kang will once again take center stage during the events of the aforementioned Quantum Mania, the real extent of his big-screen debut had largely been kept under wraps in the lead-up to Comic-Con. Now fans inside of Hall H have been treated to the already noted first teaser footage of that incoming Ant-Man epic though, it appears a very different Kang to the He Who Remains we were introduced to in Loki is set to wreak havoc on Scott Lang and the rest of the MCU. The first glimpse of one of Kang's many variants that seem destined to provide many a headache over the course of Phase 5 and 6, as Avengers The Kang Dynasty looms in the distance, captivated the Comic-Con crowd out of the gates, and his reported statement of, You're an Avenger? Have I killed you before? To Ant-Man during said teaser not only shines a light on the Conqueror's chilling multiversal massacring, but the fact that Pym crew may have bitten off more than they can chew with the suited and booted new big bad in town. Number 3. Not every Guardian is getting out of this phase alive. The much clamoured for comeback of Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn for the group's third and seemingly final outing promises to be an emotional one. Speaking during Comic-Con, Gunn was quick to note how his Volume 3 finale is much more mature than the previous tales involving the likes of Star-Lord and the gang, with the vibrant director also admitting in September 2021 that not every character will make it out of this ending alive. For those dreading a complete annihilation of everyone from Groot to Drax the Destroyer though, Gunn would ease concerns slightly by explaining during the Volume 3 Hall H panel, This is the end of that story, I'm sorry. Some stories have an end. It doesn't mean everybody dies. However, with the likes of Will Porter's Adam Warlock and Maria Balakova's Cosmo the Space Dog both making their MCU debuts during this long-awaited trilogy ender, it appears the Guardians will be made up of a very much new lineup heading into future phases. Number 2. A Red Skull Returns With the arch-nemesis of Captain America seemingly being relieved of his Soul Stone guarding duties thanks to the events of Infinity War and Endgame, Red Skull's return to Earth to cause his usual brand of chaos feels almost inevitable. Now it's finally been confirmed that a fourth Cap flick by the name of New World Order is set to go down in 2024, all signs seem to point to the one-time Hydra leader re-emerging in Phase 5. Far from simply being a nod to a famous WCW wrestling faction, the New World Order was an organization founded by Johann Schmidt in the comics, as he attempted to once again take over the world. And sure, Marvel Studios could once again be set to head down an entirely different route than the one explored on the page. They've got a habit of doing that, haven't they? But if Feige and the gang really want to put Sam Wilson's new cap to the test, who better than Red Skull and his New World Order to push him to his limits? Number 1. A street-level team-up looks likely Kevin Feige's seemingly never-ending string of new street-level hero projects being unleashed onto Disney+, Plus could actually be paving the way for another stab at a concept already seen before on Netflix. As many will remember, the likes of Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and Luke Cage all eventually joined forces in the wake of starring in their own standalone shows for an eventual Defenders outing together. So it's not outside the realms of possibility that Feige and his team are currently in the midst of putting the foundations in place for another MCU TV super ensemble of sorts. We already know that the Thunderbolts are set for the big screen treatment, with the likes of Baron Zemo, US Agent, and Yelena Belova all likely returning for the anti-hero assembling after their recent TV showings. So putting together a small screen alternative boasting already popular MCU TV stars like Kate Bishop, Daredevil, Miss Marvel, and Moon Knight feels like a bit of a no-brainer at this stage. 
Perhaps that much-rumoured Young Avengers team-up could finally be forged over the course of the likes of the incoming Echo, Ironheart, and Big Screen the Marvels outings too. Or maybe we'll just be inundated with standalone TV shows for the rest of time. And that's our list. Know any other secrets of MCU Phase 5 you need to know? Let us know all about them in the comments section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if you like this kind of thing, then head on over to whatculture.com and find some more awesome articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com, bringing you all some MCU goodness as always. Thank you very much for clicking on this video, and hopefully I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.